It's another Paralympic year and our screens will soon be filled with images of superhumans and their incredible feats. But what if you're disabled and not ripped like an athlete? What if barriers in the way of ordinary life make the everyday itself a Herculean challenge? In this series, we'll be meeting disabled people who want change in 2016 and who are embarking on Olympian tasks to overcome the hurdles. I always enabled me to change position and to get in and out of bed. How low can you go? Enabled me to get moved from any other piece of equipment I may need to be moved into. Daniel lives in Stafford with his fiance Gemma. He's been trying to go to a college reunion in Cheltenham, but only about 15 hotels in the UK have ceiling hoists available. Anyone else can, like, just ring up and book a hotel for tonight, whereas me and Jim, we'd have to plan months and months and months in advance to get it to that point. Many hotels say they can accommodate disabled people, but few can accommodate Daniel. There are hotels that say that they're accessible, but on the face of it, quite clearly aren't. I don't think it's a lot to ask for the hotels to provide hoist. Daniel has started a campaign asking just that. His MP has raised the issue in Parliament. We live in a society today that's supposed to be everyone included in everything. So, you know, if that's the society we live in, maybe we should bring everything in line with that and make it accessible to everyone. Photography, you just have to be able to, you know, take a photo. And I just love how creative it is. And also how you can use it to portray a really strong message without necessarily having to write an article or, or use words too much. Laura finishes her A-levels this summer. She wants to study photography at university but she's struggling to find a course that's physically accessible to her. Throughout my life, I've dealt with being disabled and being different from other people. And then you get to these milestones, like leaving, leaving school and going to university, when it really kind of hits you, actually. It reminds you that actually you are different and you do have requirements. And I think recently that has been a thing, that kind of you see these places, you see the courses, and the course is amazing, the facilities are amazing, but actually you can't see yourself managing. So kind of choosing the universities was definitely more focused on the access than on the photography course itself. Like her classmates, Laura would rather be worrying about other aspects of university life. I look at you know, the next person, you know, in class, whatever, and I do, I do realise that it's so different, especially at the age I am now, when you're going to university and everyone else is focused on, oh, that place has the best nightclubs, or that place has the best shops, or that place has the best student union, and actually, I need the best campus that's going to be accessible for me. <laughs> Laura has been going out of her way to tell the universities she can't manage theirs. But even so, not all of her interviews have gone to plan. I said, just checking that there's a lift. Oh, I don't know, actually. Let's go and see. They tried all the lifts nearby. No, they don't go down there. No, no, only stairs down, down, down there. And that really stung me that they thought it was acceptable to host interviews in a room that wouldn't be accessible to everybody. And that just really, really made me feel like I didn't want to be there because why go into a situation where you're, going to, where you're not made welcome? I've got two boy budgies called uh, Chico from X Factor um, and Beaver's Justin Beaver. <laughs> So what I do to entertain when I leave my flat, 
I leave the radio on for them. They like a bit of music in the background. Suing wants to be an advocate for other people with learning disabilities. She's travelled to London to meet others who want to speak out as well. Today, they are practising. Do you think that people with learning disabilities are given enough opportunities to speak out for themselves? Uh, I don't think they give a, um, get a chance for, for, uh, for them to speak out at all, really. I think they ha they're very good, yeah. I think it's quite nervous for some people, but I think it's good to sort of have a go, really. Sue Ling is joining Learning Disability England, a new advocacy group founded by people who themselves have learning disabilities. For far too long, we've had people speaking on behalf of people with learning difficulties. And a lot of the things that what they've actually said are not what generally what people with learning disabilities want. And what we want to show to the media and to the politicians that we have a right to, to this society. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I really enjoy seeing them learn. When they learn something new, they're really excited, they want to show everybody. And I've, at the end of the day, I feel that I've, even if it's something really small, I've helped that child achieve something. Where is it? Yeah. Zoe wants to work with children. Where is it? She's been volunteering at a nursery for three years whilst applying for paid work. I've applied for over 200 jobs and I've attended over 100 interviews. So he's well qualified but remains unemployed. Stop, stop, stop. Really fed up. I'm feeling really depressed at the moment because I've attended all these interviews and not getting anywhere. Where do I, you may or may? I think it's due to my disability and the fact that I'm disabled. I'm not sure whether it is discrimination or not, but it's very difficult to tell, but I think it's due to my disability. Her experience has led her to become a campaigner. There are programmes that are supposed to help disabled people, but they're not helping them at all. So I decided to campaign to get young disabled people into employment. Employers need training to support disabled people into the workplace because if they get training, I think there will be a better outcome. Yeah.